Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now let's start with the first story. It's called His Problem. Years ago, in the early 80s, fresh out of high school, I worked in the stockroom of a now defunct department store. One day, I got a call to load some dry fray sealer in a customer's car. I show up at the operator's window and the customer showed me their receipt. They went to the parking lot to retrieve their vehicle. They pulled up in a brand new Chevy Berlinita Camaro with white interior. He asked me to put the three large buckets of dry fray sealer behind the front seats on the floor. I told him that's not a good idea, but he insisted that's what he wanted. So that's what I did. I lifted one of the buckets to move it over and there was a black ring on his brand new carpet. He obviously pitched a fit, asking for the manager etc. I had the operator page for my manager. He showed up, assessed the situation, then asked me what happened. I explained to him that I tried to talk him out of it. He just turned to look the guy in the eye and told him that it is his problem. The next story is called not until 401. I work in a place that has a queue taking incoming calls until 4 pm. It's generally always busy, always understaffed, but that's the nature of the beast. I work the closing shift, where you generally come in at a later time and stay later. A few years back, I used to work extra hard, trying to get my end of work duties done early between calls, in order to leave early right when we shut down. Manager was totally on board with this. Sometimes I'd be done by 4.10, sometimes 4.45, didn't matter. I left when my work was done and rarely had to stay until 5 p.m. Enter the supervisor, the person right under the manager and the person who complains about having never enough time to do her job when she spends 60% of said time out of her seat, gossiping with other coworkers. Okay, not my circus, not my monkeys. I ignore it and proceed to keep at my habit of working hard to get done early. This usually meant multitasking between calls and adding extra stress to work off a sheet for another aspect of our job. This goes well for years, until the supervisor starts wondering why calls aren't retrieved from voicemail after hours. Never mind that it's my job to get them in the following morning, which I always do. Eventually, I decided okay. I stop working double when the queue is active and save that work for 401, since that would make her feel better. No problem. I refuse to do anything, but answer calls, cause that's my immediate priority. Fast forward months later and the supervisor is constantly asking people to help on the list between calls. Not until 401 ma'am. Meanwhile, the actual manager, the one in charge, is happy as a clam with super high productivity. After all, I am focusing on calls only until 401, at which time then I will start my closing duties and not a minute before. The third story is called One Coffee. I worked at a cafe in a big shopping center for a few months, between jobs I actually liked. The manager was a nut and liked to throw her radar around. Every evening she'd tell me to clean the coffee machine and get ready to close up. Every evening, once I was done, she'd ask me to make her a coffee for the road. I'd have to make it and then clean everything again. I offered to make it for her before I cleaned the machine, but she complained that it wouldn't be hot enough. I received a better job offer and was looking forward to one more week before leaving. However, the next night, she wanted her coffee after we'd already had to stay back and I definitely wasn't getting paid overtime. Everyone had left 30 minutes before. I had had enough. I took care to spill coffee grounds everywhere, use as many utensils and jugs as I could and just make a huge mess. As I handed her the coffee, I told her I quit. The look on her face was priceless as she realized she'd be the one cleaning up, worth being poor for a week. The last story is called Make Him Go There. This happened over 20 years ago. I'm an Australian radiographer who was working in the UK NHS. 
There was this older radiographer, Susie, who told me she hated local radiographers, and particularly hated Australians. Sadly, I was guilty of both. Susie generally tried to make my life hard, but regularly failed to succeed. All the staff liked me, and I thoroughly enjoyed the work and the people I worked with. Susie also did her best to avoid doing any activity at all. She was disliked by nearly all in radiology, including the supervisor. One Friday afternoon, at a work meeting, the supervisor radiographer informed us all that a new pain clinic service would start Monday in the operating theatres, and a radiographer was required to go for 4-6 to six hours each Monday. Now, most radiographers I know are not overjoyed at doing theatre work. You stand around in a lead gown for hours, pressing a button occasionally. Some love it, but I think it's okay sometimes. Susie quickly yells out, I'm definitely not doing that. Make the Aussie go. He's getting paid enough. Everyone stopped and looked at me, and I just said sure. No dramas. Come Monday, I attended theatre at 9am and met the loveliest pain specialist and his nurse. They made the whole day great. I would do a case, and then the pain specialist would say he didn't need me for the next case. And could I go to the tea room and wait? I actually spent most of the day in the operating theater tea room, eating biscuits, drinking tea, and reading the newspaper. I would generally come down from the theater at about 2 p.m., where I would be met by the supervisor radiographer who would tell me to take my lunch hour plus my morning tea break. I would return at about 3.30 pm, just in time for my afternoon tea break, then actually do some work from 4 pm to 5 pm. Meanwhile, Susie has been assigned to the general X-ray department, doing ward work, slogging away all day. This went on for months, until I moved on. The last week I was there, the supervisor radiographer sent another radiographer to the theater, and it was discovered what my working life on Monday had entailed. Susie was livid and demanded she should go to the pain clinic, but the supervisor reminded her she had refused previously. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon, bye bye.